Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review and a slightly different setup today. So let me know in the comments if you like this setup better, if you like the old setup better where you were sitting a bit further away and I had the camera a bit higher. Let me know what you think. I'm always looking for different ways to make the reviews a little bit fresh, a little bit different. And so I'm also always keen for your feedback. Speaking about how things look, today's review is about two of the sexiest DACs that I think I've seen in the mid-tier range. Specifically, we've got the Sonkos SGD1, and below it we've got a brand new player on the market, which is the Eversolo DAC Z6. Now, I probably could sum this up right here by saying this one's got VU meters, the end, but I do want to give both DACs a chance. I think the DAC Z6 looks amazing, I love VU meters on a device, and so that instantly won me over. But of course, if it doesn't sound better or at least as good, then it's a bit irrelevant what it's got on the front panel. And so let's take a look at both DACs now to see why I think they're both two of the best looking DACs on the market in and around the price range, which by the way is about $500 US dollars, and then find out which one I think is going to be best for different sorts of people and different sorts of uses. As I've already said, these come in at around about 500 US dollars. The SGD1, when I looked it up, was 480, and the DAC Z6, I've been told, is going to come out at about 500 US dollars. And it should be available for purchase at about the time this review becomes public. So for patrons that are watching this one early, you may not be able to actually buy it yet, but it is coming very soon. In order to keep this review fairly brief, something that's quite convenient is the fact that they've both got also very similar features in terms of the internal technology. They'll both handle DSD 512 and also high sample rate PCM, so 768 kilohertz, etc. They both handle multiple different input types, although the SGD1 does have a leg up in that it also has AES, which the DAC Z6 doesn't. The SGD1 uses a pair of ES9038 DAC chips, and the DAC Z6 also uses a pair of DAC chips from ESS, but in this case, it's the ES9068. Both also have high-res Bluetooth, so that's going to include Aptex HD, LDAC, etc. So as you can see, there's a lot about these that are very, very similar to one another. Where things do get a bit different, and it does go in favour of the SGD1, is the SGD1 gives you a few extra filters if you care about that sort of thing. And it also gives you a coaxial output, so you can essentially use the SGD1 also as a USB bridge. I haven't tested that for the sake of this review, but it's a feature that's there if you want it. Because I want to keep the VU meters running so you can enjoy watching those while I talk, I'm going to pick up the SGD1 and show you what's on the back of that one to give you a good sense of what the inputs and outputs look like, because as I said before, the SGD1 and the DAC Z6 are very similar, with the SGD1 having just a little bit more going on. <laughs> On the back of the SGD1 here, we've got a power input, of course. Both DACs use a full-sized IEC input with a power switch on the back, and that means they're both going to have some kind of internal, probably switch mode power supply based on the size and weight. And then both of them offer very similar connections in terms of optical, normal SPDIF coaxial, so like an RCA coaxial. They've got USB-B and USB-C for both of them. In the case of the SGD1, the Bluetooth antenna is internal. In the case of the DAC Z6, it's external. Not that that really matters too much. And then as I said, with the SGD1, you've got both the coaxial input, but also a coaxial output. So my understanding is you can feed a USB input into this and then take a coaxial output to a different device if you want to. Another difference and benefit for the SGD1 is it's got AES here, which is essentially a balanced version of your regular SPDIF for those not familiar with AES. And then both of these DACs offer you XLR and RCA output, and in both cases it's fully volume controlled, so these can work as preamps and DACs as well. If we put the SGD1 down now and have a look at the front panels, this is where I think both DACs are really, really attractive, but also very different. 
In the case of the SGD1, we've got this plain black panel, and behind the panel, you've got a series of yellow lights. Everything's the same color. There's no multicolored signaling here. Everything is just yellow backlight with different icons used to represent different things. So you've got a series of circular lights that tell you which input you're using, a series of circular lights which tell you which filters you're using, and then there's also an indicator light around the volume control, which will actually cycle up as you raise and lower the volume. And so it's all very attractive, but I do think for some people, it's also going to be confusing. It's not a clear and obvious display until you kind of get used to it a little bit. And then because there's no traditional display system, it's also harder to actually understand what settings you're adjusting on the SGD1. If you're using the included remote control, things are pretty straightforward. You've got a button for each of the inputs. You've got a button that'll cycle through the filters. So it's not too bad. But it's not as easy as a traditional display where you've got the text on screen, you can cycle through your options, see all the options at once, and choose the one you want. And that's more what's going on in the DAC Z6. So when we go to the DAC Z6, things are more traditional in general. You've got over here on the side at the front, we've got a power button and a 6.3mm output. So this is actually also an all-in-one with a headphone amp, which I'll get to later as to how that sounds. You've then got the volume wheel, which is also your selector wheel. So in default settings, the short press will take you into the menu. The long press will take you to a selection of which input you're listening to. But you can flip that as well. So if you want short press to be your input, long press to be your settings, you can change that around. And then you've got this lovely full color display, which is a VU meter, or you can actually switch off the VU meter and just have it showing you the information about your input and your volume level. There's also, I think from memory, three different VU meters you can choose from. So it's got a nice aesthetic appeal to it. And the menu system, I have to say, for a brand new entry into the market, the menu system is top notch. It's easy to navigate. It's really clear which section of the menu holds which function. And then within each section, it's not overloaded with options. There's enough options for the customization you might want, but it's not overwhelming and overly busy. And so I think both of them have very strong aesthetic design. If you want something really different that you've never seen anything quite like before, then it's the SGD1. But if you're looking for something that's a bit more easy to interact with and still attractive, then I personally think that's where the DAC Z6 is strong. But in the end, it's aesthetics. I'll leave that up to you because you can see that for yourself in the video here. Just to highlight a couple of other interface features that clearly separate these two. One thing I do really like about the SGD1 is that you can have different volume settings for different inputs. So for instance, if you have your optical input set at 50% volume and you've got your USB at 100, when you switch between those inputs, the SGD1 is going to remember that setting. And so if there is a situation where one of your inputs you want higher or lower, maybe it's a TV input, maybe you've got a high level output coming from your computer compared to a different device you're using, in that case, you can set up the SGD1 and it's going to remember the settings you want. So you haven't got to constantly go, hang on, I've changed to a different setting, readjust the volume and play. You just change and play. So that's really cool. I can't say I've ever needed that for myself, but I think it's nice that it's there. It's nice that it's able to do it. Going back to the Z6 now, and something that I really like about the Z6 is it does have selectable and switchable outputs. So in the case of the SGD1, as far as I can tell, I played around with it a lot. Let me know in the comments if what I'm about to say is not accurate, but I'm 99% sure that there's no way to choose whether you're sending the signal through the XLR outputs or the RCA outputs. Whereas in the case of the Z6, you can choose between having the XLR on, the RCA on, or having both on. And that's great if you're in a situation like me where I've got a set of music listening active speakers from the RCA, and I've got a set of studio monitors from the XLR for editing and things like that, then I can choose which one I'm sending the signal to, and I love that. Both of those outputs will be switched off if you plug in a headphone, so there's no manual switching like you have to on something like the SMSL M500 Mark III, and we'll talk about that one a bit later too. The DAC Z6 just makes everything really easy. And on top of that, did I mention it's got VU meters? So it's a wonderful DAC. I'm sorry to harp on about VU meters. I just love them. I think they look fantastic. I really enjoy the interactions and just seeing it kind of bounce away as I'm listening to my music is a real pleasure for me. And I know others are like me as well. You might not be, so sorry if I'm harping on about it too much, but I really, really love them. But of course, you're probably not here to find out which one I like the look of the most. You're probably wondering which one sounds best. So let's dive into some sound comparisons between these two. For my listening test on this one, I was using the Burson Soloist GT amplifier so I could have both DACs switched on at the same time, plugged into the same amp, and just switch between them at will. And then I was driving the DCA Expanse headphones. Now I've got a review coming on the Expanse soon. I was going to release it sooner, but I've delayed it a little bit because my impressions are constantly shifting with this one. It's not clear cut. 
And I happen to have the Mesa Elite, the Odyssey LCD 5, the Hi-Fi and Susvara, and the DCA Expanse here at the same time. So I'm really trying to get my thoughts together so I can clearly separate and explain which of each of them I think is good and bad at different things. So stay tuned for that one. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell because the DCA Expanse review is coming soon. And it's essentially going to be a shootout of four of the top planar magnetic headphones that are on the market right now. Going back to sound quality now though, one of the tracks I used for my testing here was Hurt by Johnny Cash. Going back and forth between the two DACs on this particular track, and I have to say, I don't think I could pick these blind. There is a difference between them, they're not completely identical sounding, but it's not far enough different, there's not enough kind of significant shift in the sound for me to say that's that one and that's that one if I couldn't see which I'd switch to. Now it is more than placebo, I'm comfortable with that, because it's not like one of them is better or worse, they're just different. And specifically what I'm hearing is that the DAX Z6 on the bottom here delivers just a tiny little bit more air and kind of crispness and texture to the sound, but it's very, very subtle. We're talking like 1%, half a percent type of shift. What that also means is that the Songkos SGD1 does sound a little bit kind of thicker and fuller in the vocals, particularly a rich male vocal like Johnny Cash. And then the Z6 brings the vocals just a half step or maybe one step back from the listener. So there's just a tiny little bit of spatial difference in the presentation, but again, it's very, very subtle. As I continued listening to Hurt, the other thing I noticed was that the Z6, because of its slight extra sense of air and texture, was giving me just a little bit more sense of kind of attack and crispness on the guitar strums, but again it's very very subtle. And where it really led me to land was that I don't think I would choose these on sound because they're just too close. There's really no point separating them on sound because unless you have them side by side and can switch instantly between the two, you're not going to notice a difference. And so just to quickly sum them up as pure DAX, what I would say is that as DAX, they are both excellent choices. I would choose one or the other based entirely on features and your preference for how they look, or maybe price. There's a chance that the DAX Z6 will be a little bit more expensive than the Songkos SGD1, and you might want to save a few bucks. In this case, you're really not losing too much if you do. Do remember that if you want the switchable outputs, it's the DAX Z6 that you need. If you want the coaxial digital output, then it's the SGD1 that you need, and the same if you want an AES input. So there's reasons to choose one over the other, and it's not really going to come down to sound in my opinion, but we also haven't gone into any depth yet on the fact that the DAC Z6 has a headphone output, and that could be incredibly relevant for some people. And so my next test was to see just how good the internal amplifier was on the DAC Z6, whether it's worth thinking about it as an all-in-one, or whether it's one of those throw-ins that really isn't worth using. For this test, one of the tracks I fired up was Better by One Republic, and specifically the string version of this track. And the first thing I noticed, which is also bared out in the specifications for the DAC Z6, is that the headphone stage is pretty weak. I don't mean weak in terms of bad quality, I mean it hasn't got a lot of power behind it. And that's not really a bad thing, unless you're trying to drive something difficult. So with something like the DCA Expanse, which are quite hard to drive, the DAC Z6 really wasn't up to the task. I was basically maxing it out in high gain. With a headphone that's pretty easy to drive, like the Mesa Elite, that was getting to minus 24 dB, which is a little bit like saying it's getting to 76% of the volume, and that was also in high gain. So you can see that even an easy to drive headphone like the Elites are still going to be requiring a fair bit of volume from the DAX Z6. On the flip side, that means it's lovely for sensitive headphones and IEMs, you've got plenty of volume range to work with, and you've got low gain and high gain to give you maximum range. So I'm not trying to knock the headphone stage here, I'm just pointing out the fact that it's not a powerful headphone stage, it's great for the sorts of headphones you might use for mixing, monitoring, mastering, playing games, any kind of mid-range impedance level headphone with modest to moderate sensitivity is going to be completely fine. Just don't think you're going to be running DCA headphones, probably the Aeon Noirs would struggle with this too, and possibly even your more difficult Hyphamans, obviously HE6SE and Sasvara are out of the question, but I could also see the struggling with things like the Aria Stealth and even the Edition X potentially. So do keep that in mind, but the good news is the quality of the sound, putting aside the amount of power, the quality of sound is good. The sound is clean and detailed, it's not particularly spacious, but that's kind of what I expect from inbuilt amplifiers like this. And overall there's nothing at all to complain about. When I switched over from the inbuilt headphone stage to the Burson Solowest GT, which is a $3,000 US dollar pure headphone amp on its own, as you'd expect I heard a fairly significant step up, and that showed me a couple of things. Firstly, it showed me that the DAC stage in the DAC Z6 is really solid, it's got a good amount of detail to give, but it also showed me that the headphone stage isn't holding it back too much. It's not quite up to the full performance level of the DAC on its own, but it's also not lagging way behind. 
Sometimes you get products like this and the headphone stage is an absolute bust. And when you plug it in as a DAC, you go, wow, it has so much more to give. Whereas in this case, I'd say the headphone stage is probably giving you 80 to 85% of what the DAC is capable of. And so it's perfectly fine if you want to use it on its own, but it will give you more performance if you have a high quality external headphone amp. Now, specifically what I heard when I went from the internal headphone amp to the external headphone amp was that the internal one does close in the sound stage a bit. Things are a little bit more congested than maybe the DAC can provide. And the sound is overall a little bit thicker and has a little bit less texture. So once again, just to close this out, I would say that the headphone stage is solid. It's lacking in a bit of power. The power figures provided are a bit hard to work with because it gives you a figure for 32 ohm power in low gain and a different figure for 300 ohm power in high gain, but it's hard to know exactly how the power works at different impedances. But the long and the short of it is, it's not particularly powerful. It's up to the task for probably 80% of the headphones on the market, but it's not going to do the more difficult ones. It's also not quite as good as the maximum performance available from the DAC. So if you can use an external headphone amp, I do recommend doing so, but it's no reason to not use this as an all-in-one as a starting point, or even for good, depending on what you're looking for. And so having established to myself that it's a decent all-in-one as well as a fantastic DAC, my next question was how it compares to my recent winner of the DAC all-in-one shootout. And so I put it up against the SMSL M500 Mark III. These come in at about the same price. The M500 is a tiny bit more expensive, but it is also significantly more powerful. It'll output 1 watt into 32 ohms, whereas the DAC Z6 is limited to just 45 milliwatts into 32 ohms. So there's a really big difference there. Putting the two of them side by side and using them purely with their own headphone stages, what I heard was that the M500 is a bit more textured and a bit more detailed, whereas the Z6 comes across a bit smoother. And that might initially sound like I'm giving the nod to the M500, but what I found as I tried lots of different tracks, a bunch of different headphones, was that consistently the Z6 was just a little bit more enjoyable. It was easier to listen to for longer periods across a wider range of music. And I didn't really feel like the Z6 was losing out on detail and texture. It wasn't lacking in that area. It was just delivering in a smoother overall way, a bit more refined perhaps. Ultimately, I can't sit here and say the M5 is better or worse. I just think they're slightly different presentations and both have their place. But the key thing for me was it showed that the DAC Z6 is absolutely the real deal. When I compared them as pure DACs, not using the headphone stage now, but using the Burson Soloist GT headphone amp, what I found then was that I do think the M500 might take the edge as the DAC. It's just a little bit more revealing, a little tiny bit more resolving, and in that regard, I do think if you're looking at it as a DAC first and an all-in-one second, then the M500 could be the choice, but again, there's a sense of smoothness and refinement to the Z6 that I did really enjoy. So I wouldn't once again say that one is clearly better or clearly worse, they're a little bit different. And as an all-in-one, if power isn't a concern, I'd probably lean towards the Z6. But if you're looking for it as predominantly a DAC with occasional use of the headphone socket, I might suggest maybe going for the M500. But I'm saying maybe because I love the Z6. I love the interface. I love the look of it. And so that kept me coming back over to the Z6 and not just because of the VU meters. Yes, I love them and they're great. But there's other little quality of life things that I love about the Z6. And one of those things is that it has an auto switching connection. So when you plug in your headphones, it switches off your monitors. In the case of the M500, you've got to go into the menu and manually select whether you want the RCA output, the XLR output, or the headphone output. In the case of the Z6, you can tell it whether you want RCA or XLR, but then it will automatically switch when you plug in your headphones. And that'll be because with the M500, they've chosen to include a Pentacon connector. And so for the convenience of a Pentacon connector, which is not actually a balanced connection in this case anyway, it's a single-ended output stage... For the convenience of having that 4.4mm Pentacon connector, you're losing the automatic switching of your preamp outputs, and that's a real shame and a reason why I do prefer the Z6. And so having compared all three of these devices, there's really not a bad choice among them. If you're looking for just an all-in-one DAC with no headphone output, and you like the look of the Sonkos SGD1, it's a lovely, lovely device. It sounds wonderful, it looks fantastic, and it works beautifully too. It's also got the AES input and the coax bit of output if you want those. If though you like the idea of having an all-in-one with a headphone amp and or you want something with a proper menu system, then both the DAC Z6 and the SMSL M500 are still both excellent choices. The Z6 gives you a touch of refinement, whereas the M500 gives you a touch more texture in the sound, but both are really excellent. If you were to put me on the spot and ask me to choose a winner though, I'm going to say that the DAC Z6 has absolutely captured my heart. And it's not just because of the VU meters, but I do love them. 
It's because I think it overall looks fantastic. I think it's a classy looking device. And more importantly, I love its interface. The menu system, as I said before, for a new entry into the market with a brand new product, they've absolutely nailed the interface. You've got a beautiful menu, easy navigation. You've got a remote control if you want it, but you absolutely don't need it. And so for those of you in the market for a DAC at around about this $500 US dollar price point, you've got three amazing options here. And so hopefully I've been able to provide some clarity for you to choose which one might suit you best. If you've got any questions remaining, pop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, if there's information available when I release this video about where you can buy the DAC Z6, I'll include that in the links in the description down below. For now though, if you have found the video useful, if you've enjoyed it, if it's been helpful to you, I'd love it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.